okay, so the people in the food industry being warned by tobacco because obviously tobacco got heavily regulated. Um, and actually, uh, it's actually one of the very few, in my opinion, success stories of regulations. Uh, less people smoke now than they did before in America. It's not nearly as big of a problem. Obesity kills, though, way more people than tobacco ever did. Do you, are you now that you've 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 investigated this and you've been so deep in it? Are you supportive of regulations or maybe state sponsored education on these foods? Because obviously they're a part of the formula that's causing so many of our health problems. So if if you're asking me kind of like what government can or should do, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. So you know, as a journalist, it's a little bit beyond. It's a little bit beyond me, but but there are kind of a couple of things that are beyond me to sort of to say, but there are a couple of things happening. One, you've probably heard of soda taxes, right? Where yeah. a few cities, I think Philadelphia, I think all of Mexico, has imposed, you know, a few cents on on bottles of soda. And it seems to work um, in nudging people just a little, just enough to kind of change their 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 eating habits. Because look, I mean, we love money as much as we love cheap food, right? So who wants to spend 10 cents more for a bottle of soda? It like, almost gives us an excuse, right? It, or almost like you could turn to your kid and say, look, if you really want that soda, give me your allowance, you know, for next week and you could buy it and the kid's going to go, oh, wait a minute. Well, that was, but, one, of the, um, that was one, yeah. of the, that was one of the greatest challenges as a trainer is that clients would say that, you know, the, the processed foods were cheaper. You could go get a whole pizza, you know, a frozen whole pizza for your family uh, that would cost the same as like a bag of fruit or something inside the grocery store. So that's it's half the battle. so true. Oh, it's one of the biggest problems and inequities here, which is that what we're talking about hurts poorer people or people of modest economic means the most. Because, look, you can be well-meaning by your family walk into the grocery store and yeah, that basket of blueberries is going to cost as much as a two pound frozen pizza that's going to feed the whole family. And so the whole farm system, and I actually looked at that once. And when I looked at it, it was like 90% of the acres in this country are planted in field corn, right? Mm -hmm. That's not the stuff you eat on the cob. That's the stuff that goes into animal feed, high fructose corn syrup, but also is ingredient in processed food. And then soybeans, right? And the rest, 10%, all of the 10% is, is all the vegetables and fruits and nuts and all that stuff we should be eating. And, and the research and development money is largely going toward the, the ingredients in, in processed food as well. So, um, so I think your clients are right. I, I think there are people working on that who will argue that it is possible to eat for, for even less money than processed food can cost. But I think it's kind of hit or miss. And it's, it's I found during the pandemic where I had to do most of my cooking because my wife worked for a hospital system and she was, you know, 24 seven for the entire year. I found the hard part was kind of not finding some dishes that were affordable and yummy and I could make without a lot of inconvenience. But kind of doing that week after week after week without boring the without boring the family, sort of getting that continuum going. Um, but look, I mean, I have a spaghetti sauce recipe down using a can of whole plum tomatoes that I'm sure costs less than the prepared sauce, um, and I have it down to like 93 seconds now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> granted, granted, if it simmers a while, the family's more apt to eat it. But but the actual work part of it, 93 seconds at less cost than a, a jar of, of, of certainly the better kind of, you know, prepared spaghetti sauces out there. Yeah, well, a couple, I mean, because it is interesting, right? Um, not only is obesity a problem, but it, it's poor people and lower middle class that are more obese than even people in the, in the in, that make more money, which in the past, it was the reverse. In the past, the only people you saw that were obese were the very wealthy and everybody else was uh, you know, under underfed or undernourished. I, I think part of the problem is the, the subsidies that we have for a lot of these crops that you talked about makes them kind of cheap. And then the, the processing the foods and the fact that they have such a long shelf life, they don't uh, have as much waste or should I say like, you know, when, you, when you're selling fresh fruits, you lose quite a bit because they go bad. But if I'm making frozen pizzas, like I'm not losing very many. Yeah, you know, it's really frustrating as a journalist because the data on what we eat is actually pretty sketchy, right? It's sort of like when the USDA talks about kind of like what we eat, 
they're mostly talking about like what's produced and they, they've only started to recently look at what gets thrown away like how much of that pound of cheddar cheese you know do you eat and how much when there's a little mold on it you like chuck the thing out and I hadn't thought about that but that's a really good point which is that um, we may be eating more modest reasonable amounts of like real food um, because of kind of the waste issue um, than processed food because the processed food like never goes bad you can like eat half of that half pocket or just two hot pockets and put the rest in the fridge and eat it later it's 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 no problem yeah come back a week later it's going to be fine oh totally um you know i wanted to go back to uh, kids for a second because that's the part that uh i think i'm most concerned with and i know that as is, is, is we're developing as children there's quite a bit of plasticity in the brain right the brain is still developing and once you hit a certain age your brain is still plastic, but there's there's parts of it that are pretty. I mean, that they're permanently developed uh, in comparison. Do we see changes in 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 brain development with children who are exposed to these foods? You know, uh, quite often as children, do we see that maybe their cravings change because their brains now have molded to want these foods even more than if they had never been exposed to them in the first place? I haven't seen those studies because I think you have to like slide these kids into like brain scans and follow them over time. And it's a little bit, it may be a little expensive and a little bit kind of invasive. And the best we could do is kind of look at their likes and dislikes as they change. I mentioned salt, right? Um, sugar too. But, but other than that one longitudinal study over body fat as, and I think he started with people in their early 20s or maybe even their teens and followed them over time. Um, I, and, and maybe there are, but I, but, I, but I don't recall reading about any kind of really deep dives into the minds of kids to see how, how their brains 